Five bells. Stand by all stations. Attention. All districts. A five alarm fire. Five bells move in immediately. That's it. Let's roll. Let's go. Fire. Presenting Firefighters, the true-to-life story of our unsung heroes who stand ready to ride by day or night against our most murderous enemy, the Demon of Fire. In just a moment, we'll join Chief Cody, rookie fireman Tim Collins, and his young brother Jimmy at Clement's department store, where they hope to find the answer to the mysterious mattress fires. You'll recall that Tim had been given a special assignment by the chief to investigate a series of unexplained and seemingly unrelated blazes. Seemingly because Tim and Jimmy had found the one thing they all had in common. They had all started in apparently normal mattresses. And in each case, the mattress had come from the same store. Now, close as they are to solving this puzzle, there was still one more tense moment ahead, as you'll see right after the following message. Let's go, firefighters. Let's move through the bustle and confusion of Clement's department store to that quiet room out back where a group of men stand in tense excitement around a simple everyday object, a common household mattress. Harmless enough, you might think. And yet in the past few days in widely separated places, one mattress after another has burst into flame, endangering life and property. As Chief Cody said to both Tim and Jimmy Collins... Plain, ordinary cotton filling doesn't do that. Yet he can't believe any fire-setting device had been inserted, or he wouldn't have called in the famous industrial chemist, Dr. Curtis, who has just cut open the sample mattress and examined the contents carefully. Now the firefighters are quiet as Dr. Curtis looks up and shoots a question at the owner of the store. Mr. Clement, how many of these mattresses have you delivered to your customers, to their homes? Well, let me see, about uh, 30, I'd say, Dr. Curtis. All from the same shipment as this one? Yes, sir. You have a list of the names and locations where they are at this moment. Well, I could get one together in about five minutes, Dr. Curtis. I'll cut that in half if you can. Then get every delivery truck you have, pick them up, and bring them in. If it's that important, Dr. Curtis, I could order out some of the fire department trucks and men to help. Excellent, Chief Cody. Those mattresses might be safe for days. But on the other hand, a certain combination of events can cause more of those mysterious fires of yours. Okay, hop to it, Tim. Yes, sir, I'll get uh, right... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, one more question. Mr. Clement... About 30 mattresses have gone out of your store. Was that the entire shipment? Oh, no, no. I probably have nearly 70 left. They were taken back to the warehouse this morning. I needed the space here. They're probably lying out in front of it now. Lying in front of that huge warehouse? Yes, yes. It's such a lovely day. We thought it wise to make sure they were thoroughly dry before storing them. That does it. You take care of picking up your customers' mattresses. Chief Cody... The rest of us had better get down to that warehouse. You mean we may have another fire on our hands, another mystery fire? It's no mystery to me, sir, but you have exactly the same circumstances there you had for all those other fires. Then this is no time for talk. What we need is action. Let's roll. A matter of seconds, and that's exactly what they're doing. The bright red car races at top speed through the traffic with Chief Cody himself tight-lipped and silent at the wheel. Dr. Curtis is beside him, busy with his own thoughts. But in the back, Private Tim Collins and young Jimmy are even more puzzled than before. Tim, what have the mattresses at the warehouse got to do with all those other ones that went up in flames? Dr. Curtis told me all those fires had something in common, something we missed, Jimmy. Oh, Oh, boy. Well, gee whiz, what was it? Do you know, Tim? Uh, You remember that last fire in that bedroom up under the eaves? The mattress was lying right under an open skylight. Oh, sure, but so what? Uh, Then that fire at the boys' camp, where they'd taken their cots outside for inspection. Also, that moving van fire, where they'd piled the furniture up outside the van. Oh, how about the porch that caught fire when that lady had her mattress airing on the roof? That's it, Jimmy. You've got it. I have? What have I got? Oh, the setup is the same at the warehouse now. But didn't you say cotton couldn't burst into flame all by itself? That's right. Well, oh, oh. oh. And didn't you say that was plain cotton in those mattresses? Yeah, right again. 
Well, doesn't Mom put our mattresses out to air without them catching on fire by themselves? Oh, oh, wait a minute. You win, Jimmy. It doesn't make a bit of sense. I said the setup was the same. I didn't say I had the answer. The boys' conversation is interrupted as the car breaks to a quick stop before the warehouse. They follow the chief and Dr. Curtis as they hurry out and over to the stacks of mattresses piled up in the sun. A heavy-set man, evidently the foreman, comes out and watches him curiously. But Chief Cody stares at the mattresses as though he had a grudge against them. I'd feel a lot happier if I knew what I was looking for, Dr. Curtis. You can relax, Chief Cody. We seem to be in time. You sure? It wouldn't be safer to ring in an alarm, get a couple of lines strung over here, and wet those doggone things down? No. All we have to do is get them inside, in a hurry. Hey, look, bud, I'm the foreman here. Why do you We want... represent your boss, Mr. Clement. This is an emergency. Yeah? Well, why should we move those mattresses inside? Uh, pardon me, Dr. Curtis. Look, young man, I represent the fire department, and that's an order. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, hustle this stuff inside, you guys. Well, Dr. Curtis, I think you ought to take a look at this mattress. There's something awful funny here. You're right. Good for you. Uh, you, foreman, come uh, here. Now, you were wondering why we want to get these mattresses in the warehouse. Here, feel this one. Uh, Say, that's mighty hot to the touch. It's like fire. You're closer to the truth than you realize. There is a fire inside this mattress right this minute. Tim, that small extinguisher for my car. Yes, sir. Gee whiz, and just in time, too. Look at there, it's burning through in this spot. See the little flame licking at the covering? <laughs> Out of the way, Jimmy. Right. Yeah, now you see it, and now you don't. Hmm. Wish all our fires were that simple, Tim. You got it. Now, if this foreman will hurry his men before any of the yes, others... Yes, sir. Uh, on the double, you guys, there's black magic around this joint. That's one thing I'm sure there isn't, magic. Well, I see you're operating on that mattress now, Dr. Curtis. Do we get the answer this time? You most certainly do. Let me cut away the cloth here and get a good handful of cotton so you can see it. But that can't be cotton if it catches fire by itself. It's cotton, all right, Jimmy. Now, all of you gather around where you can get a close look. All right. I only know of one other case like this one. Fortunately, it's very, very rare. What is, Dr. Curtis? Tim and I are standing here with our eyes popping. We can't see anything wrong. You don't need a magnifying glass. Just look very closely. You see anything scattered through this handful of cotton? Oh. Why, why, yes, yes, I do now. You... Say, you'd never notice it, but there seem to be a, a lot of tiny little seeds. That's right. Cotton seeds. The particular shipment of cotton that went into these mattresses has not been properly ginned. Has not been... what? These tiny seeds should have been completely cleaned out. Yeah, didn't you ever hear of Eli Whitney and the cotton gin? Oh, yeah, in school. Now you see how important his invention was, Jimmy. So this was improperly ginned, Doctor, and the seeds remain. Yes. Thousands of these tiny seeds left in your mattresses. Cotton seeds means the presence of cottonseed oil, which is highly volatile. Oh, now I see why, what you meant when you told me we'd better hurry because it was such a nice day. That's it. We've had a spell of fine hot weather lately. Any of these mattresses left out of the rays of the sun for any length of time were turned into regular incendiary bombs. What do you know? Cotton? Cotton seed left in it by mistake? Cotton seed oil? A hot sun on them? And, and poof, there you have it. We certainly did. One mysterious fire after another. And no explanation till this minute. Our thanks, Doctor. Uh, my thanks to you. We'll trace this right back to the source now. Now, if your department hadn't been on its toes, can you imagine the tragic consequences? We never even knew the source of all those fires until I gave Tim this assignment. Oh, uh, before we give them a hand getting the rest of these mattresses out of the sun and into that cool, dark warehouse, Dr. Curtis, I think we ought to give both Private Collins and his brother Jimmy a vote of thanks. Yes, sir. A vote of thanks to both of them. Later, as the chief's car heads back toward headquarters station. Yeah. Why so thoughtful, Jimmy? Tired? Oh, no, sir. I was thinking maybe I ought to study my chemistry a bit harder. Yeah, it does make you stop and think, doesn't it, Jimmy? I guess there are a lot of things I could brush up on myself. Oh, that reminds me. If you'd like to brush up on your technique with a scaling ladder, drop by the training school tomorrow. One of the best men in the country is giving a demonstration. Oh, say, I'm glad you told me, Chief. I'll do that. Well, what's a scaling ladder exactly? You come of a fireman's family, you don't know that, Jimmy? Oh, well, well, sort of, I do. Only, uh, I forget just how you use <laughs> it. <and> I... <laughs> He's bluffing, Chief. Shall I tell him? Uh, take him along with you to the training school, if you like, son. 
I think he'd get a kick out of it. Oh, swell. Will you take me, Tim? Will you, huh? Okay, Jimmy. And you don't know what a thrill is till you've seen a scaling ladder in action. Well, rookie fireman Tim Collins is right. Only he doesn't know how lucky it is that this chance to brush up on the technique of using a scaling ladder has come along. Because very soon... Oh, but I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Just let me say a scaling ladder has several uses. All of them in the most dangerous spots imaginable. And that's a tip not to miss our next True to Life episode of The Firefighters. Fire Chief Bob Cody will be back with your special assignment right after this message. Now, Chief Bob Cody with a special notice for the Firefighters Brigade. Chief Cody. Attention, firefighters. This is Chief Bob Cody back with something you may have forgotten in our talks about keeping attics and cellars cleaned out. There are other storage spaces in your home, maybe a special room, maybe one or more large closets. That's necessary. You can't put things you need frequently too far away. But... Keep any storage space neatly arranged. See that there's ventilation. That's the important thing. Space and ventilation. Well, that's all. Till next time, this is Chief Cody saying so long. Fire Chief Cody and the young rookie fireman Tim Collins will be back on the same station the next time you hear... That's it. Let's roll! Let's go! Fire! Firefighters is a copyrighted feature of William F. Holland Productions.